Welcome to Daedalus U. I'm Paul, coming to you from Brooklyn. This is part two of solving polynomials. We've been looking at how to apply the sum of the roots and the product of the roots equations uh, in order to uh, find all of the roots of an equation. And uh, we're going to look at one last one here. I'm going to go ahead and read it out. It's up here on the big board x to the fourth plus 7x to the third plus x squared minus 63x minus 90 equals zero. And what we know about this equation is that the sum of two of the roots is negative eight. And the product of the other two roots is negative six. Find the roots. So fortunately we do know all the coefficients for this equation and we can resort to our uh, formulas for the sum of the roots and the product of the roots in order to solve for all of the roots. Now, the, the main problem we notice though is we don't know any of the roots. <laughs> it's a fourth degree equation, so as we know, there should be four roots. All right, so here's our goal. I mean, we want to solve for these four roots. What do we know? Well, let's write out the other things they told us. Always good to write out everything you know. It said the sum of two of the roots, let's just pick the first two, so a plus b equals negative eight. And then it says the product of the other two, well the other two according to our scheme here is c times d, is equal to negative six. So that's not bad, hopefully that will be sufficient. Now let's go ahead and solve for the sum of the roots. So the sum of the roots, as we know from the previous video, is equal to negative this coefficient, right, so negative seven, over this coefficient, which is 1, so I'm just going to not write that. All right, so we know that negative 7 equals, well, the sum of our roots, according to our sign variables, is a plus b plus c plus d. Not bad. And look, we can do one nifty substitution real quick. We know that a plus b right here is equal to negative 8. So we'll plug that in and say plus c plus d equals negative 7. And so we do in fact know that c plus d, what's left over, and when we add our 8 over, is equal to 1. And that's got to be helpful. Let's take a look now at the product of the roots. So the product is equal to, as we know, the this coefficient. Now it's an even, so we don't need the extra negative, so we're going to write in the negative 90 over that coefficient 1, so just 1. And the product, according to our scheme, is equal to a times b times c times d. And notice again, we're going to go ahead and do a quick substitution. We know c times d is negative 6. So I'm going to take c times d out. I'll keep our a times b. We know that's equal to negative 90. And so moving over here, we're going to say a times b when we divide by the negative 6 is equal to 15. Okay, great, but we still don't know what any of the actual numbers are. Uh, and here, we're, here we have to do some nifty algebra and some substitution. So let's see, why don't we start by saying, well, I know that a is equal to 15 over b, right? If I divide here. And so let's see what that does for us. Because remember, we have an equation right here. So now basically we have this one and, and this one, right? Or, or with the <clears throat> solving for a, which is just, you know, it's two equations, two unknowns. They look like pretty simple equations. Let's see what happens when we plug it in. So, in, so again, um, a plus b, this was given, is equal to negative 8. And now I know that a equals 15 over b. So if I plug that in for a, keep the rest of the equation the same, well, there we go. Now we have one equation, one variable. Kind of a tricky one. When you have b in the denominator, well, you don't want that. Uh, you want to get it out of there. So let's multiply through by b to get that b out of the denominator. So we're going to multiply b to all three terms. Watch. Um, b times 15 over b is just 15 plus now b squared equals 
negative 8b. We'll move the negative 8b over. So it's plus 8b plus the 15 equals 0, right? And now look, this is a nifty little quadratic that we can solve for. I guess it's going to be b plus. So what factors of 15 add up to 8? Well, 5 and 3. Set each of those equal to 0. We know now that b is negative 5, you could say, or negative 3. But let's just go ahead and pick the negative 5, right? Essentially, the way this works out is because our variables are random, b could have been negative 5, a could have been negative 5. We'll go ahead and say b is negative 5. You plug that back into here, right? you say that this is negative 5, well then, yes, indeed, the a is the negative 3. Pretty good. So we've got two of them. We'll say a is negative 3, b is negative 5. Well, now we've got to do this again. Put a little dotted line down here, and we'll solve it again. This time, what can we say? For here, we could, sub we could solve and say c equals negative 6 over d, right? So essentially the same trick that we did before. And then we'll use this equation, right? We'll use this one here that we derive from our sum, right? So again, I'll write the whole equation here. 1 equals c plus d. And you'll notice the same kind of algebra is going to play itself out here. Instead of c, we're going to write negative 6 over d and then plus d. So again, we don't really like that d in the denominator, so we will multiply through the whole equation by d. We get d, this looks like equals negative 6 plus d squared. Well, we want to keep our d squared positive, so now we'll move everything to the right-hand side. We'll line it up. d squared minus the d from over here, minus 6, and there we have just, again, a uh, fortunately, blessedly, uh, 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 an easy-to-factor quadratic. What does that come out to? Well, we have d and d. We know when we have a negative here, we need 1 to be negative, 1 to be plus, so we get a negative 6. And we need factors of 6 that have a difference of 1, 3, and 2. We want a negative d, so we want our 3 to be in front of the negative. So our inner and outer end up being negative 3d, positive 2d, but you know all of this by now. And so, in fact, d equals 3 or negative 2, which, again, we're just going to go ahead and pick the 3. We'll say d is 3, which then when you plug the d in here as 3, well, then c is the other one. c is the negative 2. And again, those are just sort of arbitrary or interchangeable. So we've done it. C is negative 2, and D is 3. Uh, that's the answer, that's the solution, but it's worth a quick check, right? What are the sum of these roots? Well, let's add them up. Negative 3, negative 5 is negative 8, plus negative 2 is negative 10, plus 3 is negative 7. All right, that works. And now let's go ahead and check the product. What is the product of these roots? Negative 3 times negative 5 is 15, times negative 2 is negative 30, times 3 is 90. So essentially, we've checked out our 90, we've checked out our negative 7 sum, and everything works and is hunky dory. All right, that is an example of how to use these uh, rather elegant sum and product of the roots formulas in order to solve for all of the roots in a given polynomial. Thank you, as always, for joining me, and I will see you in the future.